In this video, we're gonna explain co-transport. Now, you might have seen my video over on TikTok. We're gonna do this a little bit more slowly. Hopefully, we're gonna leave you feeling like you fully understand co-transport. Now, for this example of co-transport, we're gonna be looking at the small intestine. There is another example that you'll look at in A-level biology, which is when you do the kidney nephron and you look at selective reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. So you can use this video to help you revise both examples because they're both co-transport working in the same way. Let's figure out what we're looking at here. And if you've seen my TikTok video, I am gonna go a little bit slower. So, over on this side, we are inside the small intestine. Specifically, we're inside the ileum, which is the final part of the small intestine. Now, by the time we get into this part of the small intestine, most digestion has taken place. And there's still some enzymes, so some digestion is still going on. But in the ileum, what's really important to remember is this is where nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, monoglycerides, this is where they're going to be absorbed. And when we say absorbed, what we mean by that is we want these small soluble nutrients to pass from the inside of our small intestine through the epithelial cells, which is the surface layer of cells, across the wall of the capillary and into the bloodstream. That's what absorption is. Now, to get from the lumen into the bloodstream, obviously it has to cross our epithelial cells. It also has to cross some tissue fluid. It has to cross the endothelium, which is the wall of the capillary, which is a single layer of flattened cells. And then it can reach the blood in the capillary. It's going to be carried by the blood plasma. So how does it get from here to here? Well, Let's have a look at the mechanism. It actually involves active transport, co-transport, and facilitated diffusion, which is why students find it so complicated. We're gonna start at the beginning, the, the kind of transport that makes sense to go with first. So this protein here is a sodium potassium pump. Now I've only drawn like one of these sodium potassium pumps on each epithelial cell. Here's another one. But in reality, these epithelial cells are adapted to have absolutely loads of sodium potassium pumps. So you could give that as an adaptation of these epithelial cells that line the ileum. Loads of sodium potass potassium pumps, they are located on what we call the basal membrane, so the bottom membrane of the epithelial cells and the membrane that is closest to the blood capillary. Now these pumps are gonna actively transport sodium ions out of the epithelial cells and into the blood. So this would be active transport of sodium ions. And they're actively transporting the sodium ions out of the epithelial cell and into the bloodstream. So this will be a sodium potassium pump, or you can just call it a carrier protein. Obviously it's active transport, so it re requires energy from ATP, and you are pumping those sodium ions out. Now, because those sodium ions are continuously being pumped out of the epithelial cells, that's gonna mean that there is always a low concentration of sodium ions inside the epithelial cells. Why do we want a low concentration of sodium ions in the epithelial cells? Well, if there's always a low concentration in here compared to what's gonna be a higher concentration in the lumen, we've established and we're gonna maintain a concentration gradient or a difference in concentration for sodium ions. So we've got a higher concentration of sodium ions in the lumen and a lower concentration of sodium ions in the epithelial cell because the sodium potassium pumps are actively transporting sodium ions out and then moving into the bloodstream. Now we've got a higher concentration here than in here. We've got that concentration gradient. What's gonna to start to happen is sodium ions 
are going to start to diffuse into the epithelial cells down their concentration gradient. So this is an example of facilitated diffusion. Obviously, sodium ions are charged, so they can't just cross the phospholipid bilayer, right? We know that. They are going to have to use a transport protein, but this is facilitated diffusion because they're now going down their concentration gradient. Or we can call it co-transport because as they diffuse in down their concentration gradient, they carry with them either a molecule of glucose or an amino acid. Now I'm going to use glucose as the example here. The sodium ions are diffusing in down their concentration gradient and glucose is being carried in with them. So we can actually call this type of protein a co-transport protein because it's moving two substances simultaneously. It's still an example of facilitated diffusion, so you can call it that as well because glucose, uh, sorry, sodium ions are moving down their concentration gradient through a, a transport protein, but we can call it co-transport and a co-transport protein because the glucose is being carried in with the sodium ions. Okay, now I might just put it on this one as well so you can see it happening again. Sodium's diffusing in, carrying a molecule of glucose or a particular amino acid with it. Now the glucose has been moved into the epithelial cell. So now we've got a higher concentration of glucose in the epithelial cell compared to the concentration of glucose that is in our blood in the capillary. Glucose can then move down its concentration gradient from a higher concentration of glucose in the epithelial cell to a lower concentration of glucose in the blood in the capillary. So that's down its concentration gradient. So this third type of transport will be facilitated diffusion because it's going down its concentration gradient and it doesn't require energy from ATP. So this would be a glucose transport protein or a carrier protein. It's diffusing into the blood. Once it's in the blood, it's going to be carried by the plasma and then it can move around your body and be delivered to all of your cells and used for aerobic or anaerobic respiration. Right, let's just clarify. I feel like my diagram's got a bit messy. So let's just clarify the three things that we've looked at here. We started off by looking at the sodium potassium pump, which is on the basal membrane or the bottom membrane of the epithelial cell. It's actively transporting. So number one, active transport actively transporting sodium ions out of the epithelial cell and into the blood. This keeps the concentration of sodium ions low in the epithelial cell. Then we come to number two, facilitated diffusion or co-transport. Sodium ions diffuse in down their concentration gradient, carrying a molecule of glucose with them. Glucose concentration is now higher in the epithelial cell. Then we come to process three. Glucose can then diffuse down its concentration gradient, She's using a carrier protein, so it's facilitated diffusion, but it's going from the epithelial cell into the blood, and now it's been absorbed. Now, the process is called co-transport, but that co-transport relied on the active transport of sodium ions out of the cell. Let's finish this video by thinking, how are these cells adapted for this? How are these epithelial cells or surface cells that line the ileum adapt adapted for active transport and co-transport? Well, they've got lots of sodium potassium pumps on the basal membrane. They've got lots of co-transport proteins on their cell surface membrane here. And if you look at the membrane that actually is inside the ileum, this membrane is folded. So these folds are called microvilli. Now microvilli obviously increase the surface area. We knew that at GCSE. And we also know that the bigger the surface area, the more absorption can take place. Not only do the microvilli increase the surface area, but it also means there's going to be more of these co-transport proteins. And the more co-transport proteins there are, the more absorption can take place. So we've got lots of sodium potassium pumps for the active transport of sodium ions. We've got lots of co-transport proteins for the facilitated diffusion of sodium ions and the co-transport of glucose. We've got microvilli to increase the surface area. We've also got, I don't know whether you've spotted these, 
lots of mitochondria to provide energy or ATP for the active transport of sodium ions out of the epithelial cell. And we've also, another one, we've also got lots of these glucose transport proteins or carrier proteins for the facilitated diffusion of glucose into the blood. So they're really well adapted for absorption, whether it's surface area, mitochondria, or all of the different transport proteins in large numbers, you can give any of those adaptations in the exam. And this would be the same in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney nephron and the epithelial cells that line that tubule. Whew. Hard topic. Do let me know in the comments if you found this useful, if you've still got any questions, because um, I can always go through it again, either on YouTube or on TikTok. But yeah, I'm hoping that you found this video useful.